It'll fall harmlessly to the ground, but nearly a big play by Kentucky right out of the gates. Take a look at our Budweiser starting lineup, beginning with this Gator offense. Lewis Murphy, great speed among a great core guys that can handle the football. Really an unsung guy, Dave. He's a guy that catches a lot of balls for Tebow to extend drives. We hear about Harvin, but Lewis makes a number of big-time catches. And Mill Trotwine anchors an offensive line. Trotwine, 32 starts in his career at the left tackle. And there is Tim Tebow, the 2007 Heisman Trophy winner. Well, Junior running the show, and we'll keep it on second down and get maybe two yards before he's swallowed up. Braxton Kelly leading the charge along with Corey Peters. What are your thoughts about Tim Tebow and his season? Obviously, numbers are down a little bit, but in terms of his performance on the field, what, what, do, you, what do you make of it? I think he's been outstanding. Uh, all you have to do is go back two weeks ago and look how he directed the Gator offense against LSU, a, a great defense. But he's got more weapons, more seasoned weapons around him, not just Harvin. But it will see Dempson Rainey today in the backfield. Well, Keiston Moore will split out to the near side, starting tailback. And on third down, it'll be Tebow over the middle passes. Caught and complete out to the 43-yard line to Lewis Murphy, the senior out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Give the Gators a first down. A Budweiser defensive lineup for the Wildcats it goes like this. A little bit of a change in the front four. Yeah, Ricky Lumpkin in there for Myron Pryor, but Corey Peters is an outstanding defensive tackle. He's a penetrator and does a good job. Back, banged, up, banged up linebackers. Braxton Kelly's played both the middle and the outside. And Trevard Lindley, he is the lockdown guy. Look for him to match up with Harvin some today. Inside handoff, nothing doing there. That hasn't worked for many teams throughout this season against Kentucky. Braxton Kelly with the second early tackle. Jeff Dimps on that carry. But this front four, even without Myron Pryor, this is where Kentucky's made some huge strides over the years. They actually have quality depth. They can go, they can run two guys in there and not lose much. And, and it's a team, Dave, that's gotten beat up over the first couple years of learning how to play in the SEC, but now they're a solid veteran group that knows what to expect every Saturday. First in the league in terms of points allowed under 12 a game. That is seventh in the Southeastern Conference. Chris Rainey now in a tailback. Little pitch bobbled by Rainey, and he is dropped at the line. He's still on his feet. And they'll say he was out of bounds. And that is a good thing for Kentucky because there was a lot of green grass on the near side. Whoa. Well, Florida had this option play blocked extremely well, but because Rainey bobbled, bobbled the pitch, there's the blocking. You see Percy Harvin, he does then catch the football and run it, he blocks, but because Rainey steps to the sideline, he was bobbling the ball as he, the pitch came to him. The ball was being bobbled. He could not see the block that cut inside of Percy Harvin. So another third down coming up for Florida. This is a team that has been the best in the conference in third down conversions at 45%. Tebow will throw. Looking for the home run ball. It is incomplete. Looking for Percy Harvin down that far sideline. And now the Gators will have to punt it away on fourth and 11. Well, that's that matchup we talked about. Trevard Lindley is the matchup corner. He matched up against Percy Harvin. And that's where Tebow wanted to go with it. Good job by Lindley to be right in the pocket of Percy Harvin. Well, Lindley already with three interceptions this season and eight passes broken up, which leads the conference. And we've seen him make some outstanding plays over the last couple of seasons. Mario Ford will catch it at the 16 and get it out to the 18-yard line. Good punt coverage again by the Gators. So the Kentucky offense set to take the field when we come back to the Swamp here in Gainesville, Florida. Rain or shine, the folks here in Gainesville, Florida love their Gator homecoming. Mike Hartline would love to send the folks home a little unhappy today. Quarterback, a sophomore quarterback for the Kentucky Wildcats will step under center. A little toss sweep to Alfonso Smith. We talk about the great speed of Kentucky. Alfonso Smith also has some outstanding speed as we take a look at our Budweiser starting lineups for Kentucky. Uh, you mentioned Alfonso Smith just last year at Pro Day when the pros come in and time the players. He ran a 4-2-40. So I would think that would match up with anybody in Florida put out on the field. He's an, and he'll have to fill a role. Derek Lockout against Gary Williams. 
starting his 32nd 30 30 game at left tackle for the Wildcats. Second down and seven. Izzo Smith trying to work the short side of the field. Gets a couple. And that'll bring up a third down and roughly six as we take a look at this Gator defense that checks in, giving up just 13 points a game. Well, Jermaine Cunningham comes in with almost 10 sacks in his career. He's got three on the year, but he's an outstanding pass rusher on the edge. He'll have to stop the run, and Brandon Spikes will be the guy that'll key to that. Run through, make tackles. Joe Hayden will slide inside from his corner spot on third down to play the nickel. Look for Joe Hayden to blitz off the slot. Going here to the near side after the 26 yard line goes John Connor, the fullback. That is well shy of the first down, so the Cats go three and out. Now, last option for Hartline there was to throw the ball in the flat to Connor. He wanted to get the ball across the sticks, of course, and Joker Phillips does such a great job for Rich Brooks, the offensive coordinator, Joker Phillips, of keeping this team in manageable third down situations, but they have been unable to convert, converting at just 20 percent over the last two football games. Tim Maste, who leads the SEC, or excuse me, yeah, leads the SEC with a 45.2 average, third in the NCAA, and it's blocked! Loose football! Inside the five, Maste kicked it, and the Gators will have it first and goal. William Green came flying in, the true freshman out of Boomer, Alabama. Right through the middle, Dave. Breakdown, obviously, in protection. William Green blows right through the middle, and this is a group that's coached by Urban Meyer himself, the punt block unit. That is the first blocked punt by the Gators this year. Have illegal kicking. Number 44 on the kicking team. That penalty is half the distance. From the spot of the foul. Carol will be first down. First block allowed by Maste, I should say. And Chris Rainey had a chance. Well, Rainey was looking for that little high bounce so he could take it in for a touchdown. But an excellent job. A green just coming right through the middle. Went for the football as opposed to the foot. The Rainey looking for the Sunday hop. He didn't get it, but the Gators are set up inside the five. You know, Urban Meyer told us the very first week of the season we were here about the fact that he loves to have speed on his punt block team and his kick block team. But that time it came from somebody that wears a, a big number. <laughs> he blew through and got his hands on the ball. First and goal. That hand off. Fake the dense touchdown, Tim Tebow. Excellent read from Tim Tebow on the read, read play for himself. No option on this. The only option is for him to keep it and run it. He's going to read the defense again. Jarman crashes. He pulls it. Boy, excellent read by Tebow. Looking for Jeremy Jarman right here. Watch him crash. He crashes to the inside. Tebow pulls it, gets in the end zone. His fourth rushing touchdown of the season. Set up. By the block, punt. Jonathan Phillips splits the uprights. Urban Meyer has said a team that blocks a kick during a game wins 90% of the time. We'll see if that holds true. Back after word from your local stations. Go back and take a look at that block and see how the Gators were able to slice through that line. Yeah, here's William Green right here. A little tough to see him in the down position, but he's going to blow right through. Just runs through a block, puts his hands on the ball. Rainey almost scooped it, missed it, but at that point, the damage Gators was done. Yeah, <laughs> Gators were set up for the Tebow touchdown yeah. run. Right. Yeah. And that's a, that's a group that Urban Meyer takes a tremendous amount of pride in. Dave, you talked about it. We've talked to him a number of times this season. He puts his some of his best players on that punt block in it. On all his special teams, really. Tony Dixon will take it at the three. And hit hard at the 
18-yard line. Will Hill with the special teams tackle. Let's follow him from the kick. Yeah, true freshman from West Orange, New Jersey. He's a backup safety, but he's a guy pushing to get himself on the field on the defensive side. Well, he's a monster on special teams. Big hit inside the 20 for the true freshman, Will Hill. The guys beg to be on that team, huh? Woo. <laughs> That's how you get on the field regular day. <laughs> I like my spot up here. So Kentucky went three and out in their opening drive. Now out of the shotgun. A little inside toss. Out over the 20. To the 21-yard line goes Tony Dixon. Brandon Spikes with his first stop this afternoon. Our first and 10 line brought to you by IKBI Incorporated. Igby, building vision, building relationships. Dave, we hear all the time defensive coaches saying fit against the run. you got to have your gap. That time Brandon Spikes does an outstanding job of playing inside, taking away the little shovel pass from minimal gain. Yard line goes Alfonso Smith. Janoris Jenkins runs him out of bounds. Janoris, another true freshman out of Ahokie, Florida. We've got the top two scoring defenses in the Southeastern Conference going toe to toe today. Here's Charlie Strong, the defensive coordinator. Let's check in with Dave Baker. Buzz. Dave, you can see Kentucky's going no huddle now, but we talked to Joker Phillips. So I want to get up to the line fast, but then use some clock. Right there, Mike Hartline getting the play from Randy Sanders on the sideline. And what they're trying to do, Arch, is they're trying to get Florida at the line and limit their personnel group substitutions. Play clock down to two. Hartline has time to throw. And it goes incomplete, looking for T.C. Drake, the tight end. And here comes that Wildcat punt team. Wow, this, you'd like to have thought that they could have in third and one situation. As much as Joker Phillips knows he needs to move the chains, tough to come out and play action there and try to throw it against the zone coverage of the tight end. Florida had it completely covered up. No outlet for Hartline to get the ball in the flat to the, to the running back. Tim Mastay, one of the best punters in the country. Might be a little shell-shocked after what happened moments ago. And it's blocked again! Inside the five. They'll say he's out of bounds inside the one. This time it was Jeff Dimps. Are you serious? What's that stat say, Dave, about two block punts? That's the second block this year for Jeff Dimps. Well, Jeff Dimps is a 4-2 guy, and he, that's why he's on this. They feel like he can split through and get on the football. He does a great job of getting there. Delonte Thompson almost scooped and got in the end zone. But he's knocked down, or he dives, and was out of bounds at the one. But just comes through unblocked again, and that's about the whole group up front taking care of things. That's Steve Ortmeyer, the gentleman on the left. They are they are reviewing this play. This they, they're going to look to see if Thompson was actually in control of the football as he hit the pile on. Let's go down to Dave Baker. Hey, Dave, interesting thing about what's happened so far. There's been a lot of talk here around Gainesville about Florida not really getting into the flow for these early games. Now, Urban Meyer and all the players we've talked to say they like them, but they just haven't gotten into it. Urban Meyer trying to push that by getting not one, but two block punts. Ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. So Hubert Owens tells us it will be first and goal from inside the one. Red zone powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Well, this is the toughest scenario here. They're, Kentucky's outstanding in the red zone. You see the numbers there. But normally teams don't take over at the three and the one <laughs> with four downs to push it in. So this is a tough task for the Wildcat defense here. Boy, this, look at Mastay down there, Dave Archer. He is Steve Ortmeyer, Steve Ortmeyer, special teams coach right there, talking to his punter. This time, Tebow hands it off to Brandon James, and he gets in. Perhaps the shortest scoring drive you will ever see. Now, 
Now the Gators are an extra point away from being up 14 to nothing, and they've, they've had to move, move the ball four yards for two touchdowns, all because of their punt block unit. Good job, just powering it straight ahead with Brandon James. Jonathan Phillips connects on the point after. The Gators lead it 14 to nothing here in the opening moments of the first quarter. Yeah, you're, it's about counting defenders. So you got one, two, three, four, five defenders. One, two, three, four, five blockers. So what you have you got, here's Jeff Demps right here. What you've got to do is get your center to pop left. He pops right. Nobody for Demps. Demps blows through the hole and is all over the punter. So Kentucky didn't get their shifted over to block five on five there. That kickoff sails through the end zone, and Kentucky will bring it out to the 20. Well, fans, get your cell phones ready. Time for our weekly interactive feature called the All-Tell Text of War, and we want your answer to this question. Who will have more total yards today, Kentucky's Randall Cobb or Florida's Percy Harvin? Now, text your answer to S1 or S2 to 55333. We'll update the results later in the half. Well, Cobb or Harvin uh, haven't been much of a factor. It's been special teams. Now, Kentucky just got to get back to what they want to do in the opening snap is to try to move the ball with moving in chunks. Just move the chains. Inside handoff. Alfonso Smith will take it out over the 20 to the 21 yard line. You know, Kentucky's going to have to start picking up at least a couple of first downs to try to flip the field, get something going. Or to keep their punt turn unit off the field. You might want to go for it on fourth down at this <laughs> point, right? I mean, this this is obviously a nightmare start for Kentucky, but all they have to do is put together a good positive drive on offense, and, and your feelings change in the game. How about that? Gators starting field position average today is at the Kentucky 25. That pass is nearly picked off. It'll be incomplete third down on the way. Joe Hayden had his paws on it. They were looking for Randall Cobb. Yeah, Cobb was in the slot to that side. Joe Hayden playing that inside slot defender spot. And Hartline's a little late with this throw, which allowed Hayden to come out of the break and beat Cobb to the point. Good play by Joe Hayden. Down and distance marker brought to you by Academy Sports. It's third and eight. A couple of weeks ago when we had the Wildcats against South Carolina as UK takes a timeout, timeout. they were just one out of 16 Kentucky. on third downs. That's their first time not out happy about something. We'll come back to the Swamp after this from the SEC. It's already 14 to nothing. 8.39 to go in the opening quarter. Dave Archer, you know, if you're Kentucky, how do you keep positive? How do you try to get back into this well, thing mentally? You, you have to go play by play. This is a key play here. Get a first down. It's baby steps. Get yourself back into rhythm on offense. will fire passes batter away at the last moment looking for Eric Adeyemi and it'll go incomplete the freshman from down in Miami oh, it's an excellent job major right the free safety is going to break on this football he reads the eyes the quarterback breaks gets the left hand in and strips it out that's big time safety play from major right and here comes the punt team again Two punt attempts by Mass Day and two blocks. That was a one-step punt. He gets it off, and it will roll out of bounds inside the 40 down at the 39-yard line. Here's a look at that special team's performance. The first block. 
And that results in the Tim Tebow keeper. The second block. Jeff Dimps would set up the Gators inside the one. That's where Brandon James would take it in. And that's pretty much been the excitement today. Steve Ortmeyer, a minor, minor celebration on the sidelines that they got that punt off. Gators have blocked four this year. Here goes the speech, Sir Jeff Dimps. Inside Kentucky territory down to the 46-yard line. David Jones, who's playing with a hyperextended elbow today, makes the tackle. Let's go check in with Dave Baker. Buzz. Dave, one of the best stories I've heard in a long time was Urban Meyer talking about when they were up real late against LSU. He looked out on the field and saw some guy flying by him on kickoff coverage. It was Jeff Demps, who was featured just yesterday in the New York Times in a story about him being the fastest football player to ever play the college game. And it's great to see him out there on special teams in addition to him being so special in the backfield. Tebow will throw near side. Pass caught by Lewis Murphy. That'll be close to the first. Actually, it'll be about a yard shy where they finally spot the football back at the 31 and a half yard line. Now, I mean, going back to what Buzz was talking about, about Jeff Demps, he, he was trying to get some other players in the game late in that football game to get some of the, the regulars off. And here's Jeff Demps, one of his regulars at the, at the running back spot, throwing himself into the wedge with the score 51-21 late in the game. He said it tells you this tells you a lot about what kind of kid he is. You know, Dempsey will be the first one to tell you he's a football player first, then a track guy. And here's the other guy that has a little bit of speed. Chris Rainey. And a flag comes in late. Calvin Harrison out of Columbia, South Carolina. A little too aggressive on that near sideline. He's trying to get the speedy Rainey out of bounds and at this point, he just kind of got wrapped up with him and couldn't get his hands off him and gets the flag. But some frustration, I'm sure, has set in a little bit After with Kentucky's with defense. They haven't been given her many opportunities. Late hit out of bounds. Number 33 on the defense. That penalty is 15 yards. Added to the end of the run. First down. Not the kind of start Kentucky was expecting here on the road, especially after a thrilling come from behind last week at home. They score a couple of touchdowns in the final four and a half minutes to beat Arkansas 21-20. Now the Gators inside the red zone again, looking at a first and ten. In motion is a tight end, Aaron Hernandez. And it off to Harvard. Stretch to the far side. He will walk it into the end zone. Touchdown to Florida. 16 yards, and it's 20 to nothing. Just a great job of formationing into the position to get Harvin on the edge. And there was a telltale sign on the play. The two outside receivers are on the line of scrimmage. Usually you'd have one step back off. They get the block there by Keiston Moore. And Harvin just coasts into the end zone. What Kentucky's having a tough time doing, Dave, is they're not setting an edge and they're not turning anybody back to the inside. One after up and good. It is 21 to nothing. And with the Gators leading by three touchdowns, we will return to the swamp after this from the Southeastern Conference. Florida leads at 21 to nothing as we take a look at our Texas Peach scoring drive. 61 yards. This kickoff sails into the end zone. And the Wildcats will once again bring it out to the 20. Their fourth possession here of the opening quarter. And let's go back to the touchdown. A hey, very interesting situation. This receiver and this receiver are both on the football, which tells you they're going to run the football to the edge. You wouldn't line a receiver up on the line on both sides if they're not going to run it. They did not see that. Keiston Moore gets the block. The receivers are immediately into the secondary for the block. Good job of the outside receivers for the Gators on that play. And a misrepresent or misrecognition by Kentucky's uh, defense. Toss sweep. Nothing doing again as Alfonso Smith is hammered by Ryan Stamper. 
Stamper's a guy that Charlie Strong told us, the defensive coordinator, is a guy that is just in the right spot, it seems, all the time. Just a guy is very dependable, very reliable, and you can't have enough of those. Well, you said the name, you said the word reliable. That was one he kept coming back to. He's the most reliable football player I have. Pretty reliable on that play right there. Second down and nine. Four-man rush. Hartline steps up. Looking for Cobb. Overthrows him. Hartline Coverage by Marky Anderson. And that'll bring up another third down and long situation. Florida's doing a good job of taking away the underneath throws. They know that Hartline wants to kind of go incrementally down the field, throw the little short stuff to move the chains, but they're taking away those throws and forcing him to throw down the field, and they were on the coverage there. Marky Anderson on the coverage against Cobb. So once again, this is a situation where Kentucky's missing their leading rusher, Derek Locke, out for the rest of the year, their leading receiver in Dickie Lyons, Jr. His career is over with a knee injury. Here's Cobb trying to shake some blue jerseys, can't do it. And that'll bring up fourth down as Dustin Doe returns from a double hernia surgery to make that tackle. Charlie Strong is doing a good job on defense. He normally likes to bring pressure on third down, but he realizes Kentucky is limited in the playmaker situation, so he's playing zone. That play's not very good against zone. A lot of guys can rally the play on the tunnel screen. back off. Maste shows his legs. It is a boomer. Brandon James will field it inside the 20. Couple of nifty moves out to the 39-yard line. Brandon James averaging over 20, almost 21 yards per punt return brought down by Sam Maxwell eventually. Well, he's almost one of those guys that you just get a block or two for him. He's going to make everybody else miss. Well, nothing like it, presented by Crystal in the swamp. And you got to love SEC stadiums when they're filled to capacity, over 100% capacity every home game. There's four or five schools that are always up over 100% capacity. I love that. Here goes Tebow. We'll pick up six on the carry down to the 45-yard line. Matt Lentz brings him down. Some of the numbers from Tim Tebow last year to this year, and the numbers are down. We talked about it a little bit, but what do you make of all that? I make the fact that he's got more people around him. He's a year older. He distributes the ball a little bit better than he did when he was a sophomore. He does a good job of getting more people involved. I mean, I, I, I think he's grown. He, he keeps growing as a quarterback. I, didn't, I don't think it means he's less productive at all. Spin move by Dents will pick up the first down out to the 46 of Kentucky. You know, at times last year, you and I, I mean, for instance, we were doing the Ole Miss Florida game a year ago, and Gator fans will remember it because Tim Tebow put the team on his shoulders. He was a one man wrecking crew in that game. And yeah, they ended up winning the game. Tebow was beat up. And I think that that was ultimately the game that determined we can't have our quarterback do that. I, I agree with you, Dave. He had carried the ball 27 times that day for over 160 yards, and that's a pounding the quarterback's not used to taking. Dents with another first down for the 33. Marcus McClinton hanging on. You know, Jeff Dents, when you look at his measurables, he's 5'8", 176. But when you go down the field and look at this guy, he's built like he's 210 pounds in the waist down. He runs through people. And when you got the big fellows up front blocking, there's Jason Watkins getting the block on Micah Johnson, the middle backer. Then you know you're going to have some creases. And all these guys need, Harvin, Rainey, Demps, is a little bit of daylight, and they're going to take it home. Looks like Mike Pouncey is down, the right guard. This is an offensive line already missing veteran left guard Jim Tart with a shoulder injury. 
go downstairs, check in with Dave Baker. Buzz. Dave, that's been the only negative for Florida today is uh, some injuries that we're keeping an eye on down here. You see Pouncey, they're looking at his left ankle right now. Uh, Dr. Pete Indelicato, uh, the team physician, is back in the locker room with Janoris Jenkins, who's just gotten rave reviews from this coaching staff about what he's done in the secondary. He went limping off a short time ago. And linebacker A.J. Jones came limping off after that last series. So even though the Gators have dominated early, uh, getting nicked up early in this one as well. Now, so often they get bent over. You're going to see Mike Pouncey from the right guard spot. He's going to come off, drive block his guy. Now he's going to try to turn, and there's Pouncey, 55, right here. Watch the leg get rolled up right there by the Kentucky defender. And that's what happens so often, those big fellas in there. They're trying to create room for the running backs, and people are falling on the back of their legs. Dems comes in motion. He'll set up in the slot near side. Pressure comes. Tebow hit, throws it up. Perfectly executed. Touchdown, Florida. It goes 33 yards. I don't think Harvin ever broke stride. This is the straight go route for Harvin in the slot. We talked about this matchup. Lindley, the best corner they have on the outside. Jeremy Jarman coming with pressure. Outstanding job of Tebow standing in, letting it go with a man in his face. And an outstanding throw. Look at Jarman deliver the shot. Tebow doesn't flinch. Puts over the shoulder. Perfect throw to Harvin. I don't care how good the coverage is. Lindley was not going to stop that play. See this coming. 28 to nothing. 3:15 to go in the opening quarter. Tebow to Harvin. Gators in control. We'll return after this for the SEC. Well, the Gators. Just about everybody wearing a Gator jersey feels like Superman today. I mean, the crowd was into it well before the kickoff. Gators obviously into it. Just need Kentucky to get into it. If we look at our Texas beat scoring drive. That drive went 62 yards, only four plays. And the human highlight film, Percy Harvin, adds another to his long list of big plays. That kick sails into the end zone, and Kentucky will bring it out to the 20 again. Well, we mentioned Harvin can beat you in a number of ways. We saw him run. Here's Harvin right here. Watch him freeze the feet of Trevor Trevard Lindley. He's going to dip to the inside, freeze the feet, and then go right by him. And, of course, a perfect throw from Tim Tebow under heat. Percy Harvin's now scored a touchdown. Of course, his run for a touchdown earlier in the game. Randall Cobb in a quarterback. It's nine games in a row, Harvin scored a touchdown. On. The true freshman will throw it a little too hard as he was looking for Demario Ford, a junior out of LaGrange, Georgia. As you can see, Kentucky trying to get something, some spark going, and Randall Cobb with his unbelievable athletic ability, a high school quarterback. Now a receiver for the most part of Kentucky. They're just trying to get him the football as much as they can in any way they can. Yeah, just trying to make some plays. And now Cobb's in to get Cobb. That's his 16th throw on the season. So he has played some quarterback throughout the year. A little throwback. Out over the 25-yard line goes Tony Dixon. Roll screen back to the backside to Dixon. Good job by Brad Durham, the big right tackle, to get a block to get Dixon up the field. And here we go again, Dave. Joker Phillips again designs a play where they are now in a manageable, very manageable third down situation. Kentucky 0 for 4 on third down. Hit as he throws, passes caught by Tony Dixon, but he is two yards shy of the first down. And here comes that Kentucky punt team again. And listen to the crowd enjoy the efforts of their Gator defense. Florida's just doing an unbelievable job of taking away the underneath throws. Here's Ahmad Black working against Dixon in the flat. 
And this Gator team knows they have not allowed a first down. High snap, no rush from Florida. Fast day with a high punt. Brandon James telling everybody to get away, and the ball hits and will roll inside the 25 down to the 24-yard line. Take a look at our Chick-fil-A nugget of the game, and Florida has owned unranked teams in here. They are 80-3 and three against unranked teams in the Swamp since 1990, and it was when you and I were looking back at this, it's hard to believe the three teams that, that beat them. I mean, it'd be, it'd be tough to guess if you weren't paying attention. That's right. Old one guy, one guy, one team's done it twice, and we saw it a couple weeks ago right here. And then Eli Manning let his crew in here a few years back. Well, Eli Manning in 03, and Ole Miss won here at the Swamp. Last year it was Auburn on a last-second field goal, and then a couple of weeks back it was Ole Miss again. So the Rebels have done it twice. Tebow will keep it. Drops the football. And Kentucky may have their first break of the game. And the scramble says that the Florida Gators will have it. Boy, there were four white jerseys around the football. How in the world Kentucky didn't come away with it is beyond me. Well, it's an excellent job by both Kentucky's defensive ends. Ventrell Jenkins is the guy that's going to come from the backside, but Jeremy Jarman slow plays. It's 99. Look at him slow play it. Wait, wait. Here comes Jenkins from the backside. He rakes the ball out, and then somehow <laughs> Florida How Gator the gets back in there to get this football. <laughs> that's it's, that's it's, how it's gone. Yeah, it's excellent. Do you look at all the white shirts around the football? Micah Johnson tried to scoop it and run with it, but the Gators get back on it. Go out of the shotgun. Lofts it up and Lindley with his fourth pick of the year. Javard Lindley is asked to do probably more than any other corner in the Southeastern Conference in terms of guarding, defending the best receivers. Well, whenever you're on the corner, you're like a gunslinger. You're either going to get shot or you're going to make it, or you're going to shoot the other guy. And here, Lindley, remember, Lindley got beat on the touchdown. He comes right back against Harvard and undercuts Harvin to make the play. you got to have a short memory when you play corner. It was three minutes ago. He was getting beat for a touchdown. Now he steps up and gives Kentucky excellent field position inside the Gator 40. Cobb still in at quarterback. Hand off left side goes to Dixon as a flag comes in. one of the best pickups on first down for Kentucky today. Illegal shift, number 80 on the offense, was not set one second prior to the snap. That penalty was five yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. So they pick up seven on the run, but the penalty will move them back five. Dave, hey, you mentioned that old Miss game that we had a chance to do here a few weeks back when the Rebels were able to beat the Gators, the only loss they had. And it was the sudden change defense for Florida that had a tough time operating. Two fumbles in the second half for the Gator offense resulted in 10 points for Ole Miss. Let's see how Charlie Strong's group steps up here against Kentucky on this turnover. Tom still under center. They will pitch it to the far side. Plenty of room for Dixon. He will be close to the first down. Inside the 30-yard line. And had a great block on the outside. Tremendous block by John Connor on Will Hill, the safety. Will Hill's trying to come up the fill, and Dixon's going to get the lead block. Here comes Hill, the safety, coming right at you. Tremendous block right there by John Connor to get Dixon on the edge. And that's what you call taking care of the edge. That's something they have not been able to do to seal or take the edge. Good job there. Well, probably no team is happier to see this first quarter come to a close than the men wearing the white. It is homecoming here in Gainesville, a tradition started in 1923. And the Gators own the first 15 behind two block punts. Back in a moment. SEC football is brought to you in part by Chevrolet. Overcast day at Florida Field. 
Kentucky down 28 to nothing, but they're moving the football inside the Gator 30. It's first down and 10. First play of the second quarter. Cobb fires. Good looking throw. Pass is caught by Gene McCaskill, and he'll take it down to the 13 yard line. Well thrown ball by Randall Cobb out there to McCaskill. Take a look at the red zone, powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. The problem for Kentucky has been the fact that they are 11th in the league in touchdown percentage. They've only scored a touchdown 50% of the time this year inside the red zone. There's Cobb. That handoff goes to Dixon. Brought down by Will Hill. Well, Randall Cobb has come in and kind of steadied the, the offense here for Kentucky. Done a nice job of making some plays. Another look at the red zone, powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. Gators have allowed eight touchdowns and 14 trips. That pitch behind Dixon. He did a good job just holding on to it. That pressure came from Lawrence Marsh to force the bad pitch by Cobb. Yeah, Lawrence Marsh is going to get penetration, gets on Cobb, so Cobb has a tough time getting the ball out in front to Dixon on the pitch. There's Marsh wrapping up Cobb, and the ball's on the back shoulder, and Dixon really does a nice job of really holding on to the football and not turning it over down there. So third and 11 now. Cobb hit as he throws. Knocked away by Joe Hayden. The intended receiver was Demario Ford, and here comes the Kentucky kicking team. They'll chip the field goal. Joe Hayden does a nice job of understanding that he's got the back line as an extra defender, so he doesn't lose any more ground, and he sits down on the route, and then he lays out in front. Tremendous athlete, Joe Hayden, almost takes it away down on the goal line. So Sieber in to attempt a field goal. It'll be from 32 yards out. Sieber, 5 out of 10, as long this year has been 40. That's blocked! Joe Hayden got a paw on it, and there goes Major Wright. Knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Dave, we mentioned at the top that Florida had to come in hungry. And boy, they are playing inspired football today, especially on the special teams. Joe Hayden, who just made the play on defense, comes in, gets a hand on the ball, knocks it up in the air, and then Major Wright feels it in the air and was a player or two away from taking that one back. Well, it's time to get out the record books now and see what the Florida record is for block kicks in a game. This is amazing. Chris Rainey, nowhere to go. Number three. Lintrell Jenkins will get credit for that tackle. I, I, I'm just, I'm baffled. And, and I'm sure Ort, Coach Ortmeier is also baffled. Well, for a guy to come off the edge like Hayden just did to block that kick, Something had to be a little bit slow in the operation. Remember, Sieber had been replaced and had not kicked for a couple of games. This is his first game back after kicking in the first three. Demps dancing around. Not a lot happening on that play. Let's go check in with Dave Baker. Buzz, what do you got? Uh, guys, let's not forget now. The last time we saw Kentucky two weeks ago, that game really got turned around when Sieber got a kick blocked and Captain Munnerlyn took it back all the way for a touchdown. Rich Brooks said it was just an inexplicable breakdown on the front line, but then I was telling Rob Reichley, our producer, right before that kick, I was struck in the pregame about how low Lona Sieber was kicking the ball. It's a combination of things, but it has been a really bad mix for the Kentucky special teams today. 
You know, Kentucky, the most points they had given up all year was 24 in one game. Plenty of running room now for Jeff Dents. Touchdown, Florida. There are no flags, and that play travels 61 yards. Baby, you got to credit Dan Mullen because Jeff Dents comes into this game with only five receptions on the year. So if you're Kentucky, you're probably figuring, hey, Dents is not a pass receiver. They like to run it with him. Well, he just got one out of the backfield, and, and if he gets any room, we heard Buzz talk about how fast the kid is. He took it to the house. His fifth touchdown of the year. And here is Jonathan Phillips for the point after. It has been all Florida back in a moment. Folks, your eyes are not deceiving you. It is 35 to nothing. As we look at our Texas Pete scoring drive, it was a Jeff Dim 61-yard touchdown reception. The Gators are averaging nine yards per play this afternoon. Flag comes in as E.J. Adams is tripped up. And Kentucky will have to back up to get this possession started. Holding with the return, number 47 on the receiving team. That penalty is 10 yards from the spot. Here's that five. touchdown. They they get a, they're getting a good job of coverage down the field. This is just a check down for Tebow. Nobody open, dump it to my check down. Now watch the block right here by Riley Cooper. This is going to cream up to get to the sideline, and it's over right there. Cobb still in at quarterback. Will roll to his left and is swallowed up down at the 11-yard line. Brandon Spikes leading the charge along with Carlos Dunlap. Excellent pursuit from Carlos Dunlap. Big defensive end. He's going to come from your right side, play off two blocks, stay on his feet. Spikes does a good job of taking away anything up the field for Cobb, and then Dunlop closes from the backside. Good gang tackling by two Gators. There's Carlos Dunlap, a guy they call the Freak 2. Reminds a lot of folks around here of the great Javon Curse. Gators blocking blitz. Spikes at the line of scrimmage. A.J. Jones steps up to the line of scrimmage, and the true freshman Cobb will take a timeout. We'll step aside back to Gainesville after word from your local stations. During the timeout, Rich Brooks having a little discussion with his true freshman out of Alcoa, Tennessee, Randall Cobb. Now they want him to continue to move to the sideline. They felt like he pulled up a little bit too quickly on that play where Spikes and Dunlop got to him. Second down and 14 out of the timeout. Florida still showing blitz. They will back off, and Cobb will fire pass. It's caught, and a big-time collision out at the 26. Will Hill lays a big hit on E.J. Adams, but how about Adams hanging on to the football and picking up the first down? Yeah, and how about the true freshman, Randall Cobb, standing in there with his crowd here in the swamp and making this throw? Great job of catching the football. And a good job taking away the pass rush, let his freshman quarterback stand in and let it go. I'm impressed with Cobb in this environment to come in as a true freshman. This kid was playing high school football last year. He will stand in there, check down, and a wide open running back. I believe that's 
John Connor, the fullback, to make sure 138, not 28. So the former walk-on with a big pickup that'll move the change again for Kentucky. This is his second catch in the game. That's a good job. He's just a check down. Good job by Cobb to look down the field. Didn't find anything. Dropped it off in the flat to the big fullback. It's a good job. Randall Cobb operating right now. So Dixon and Smith alongside Cobb in the backfield. Will change the play at the line. Smith hit immediately by Terrence Sanders, a sophomore out of Bradenton, Florida. It almost looked like that Brad Durham, the right tackle, doesn't get the play because he's pass setting. And Randall Cobb turned and handed the football off. Watch the right tackle. He, he just opened up the gate. It wasn't Brad Durham. Let's not blame Brad Durham. Maybe Jess Beats, the inside player. The guard did not make the play. Brad Durham was on his guy. I apologize. Yeah, no flags. I just think they're going to need to reset the... I think we had a clock issue. is working. Yeah, and I think they're just trying to reset the 25 second clock. I think it might have locked up. And now we will play some football. 8.48 to go in the second quarter. Second down and long. 15 yards to go for the Wildcats. Cobb overthrows Smith. Again, they want to roll left, set up a screen, have Cobb throw the ball backside. Good job by Brandon Spikes on pressure to the outside. And there's a, a young man who was happy to be on the football field, Brandon Antwine, the redshirt sophomore out of Texas, who, folks, this time a year ago was in a wheelchair and didn't know if he would ever be able to play football again. And he has worked his tail off to get back on the football field, played a couple of snaps a couple of weeks ago against LSU. And Charlie Strong tells us he will be a factor the rest of the way for the Gators. Cobb dancing around. Look at his athletic ability. Into Gator territory at the 47-yard line. Pressure came from Matt Patchen and Boy, Cobb just used his athletic ability and outran everybody. He, he really did, Dave. He does a nice job of finding a crease in the hole. Then he gets up the field and gets a good block from Alfonso Smith, the tailback. Number 29 gets the block right there that allows him to get out of bounds, get the first down. So good job of scrambling by Randall Cobb, and then a good job of Alfonso Smith help his quarterback out. When we asked Rich Brooks about the plans for Cobb, as he has been mostly a wide receiver. He's played some quarterback, as we've talked about, but flags come down. Perhaps a substitution issue. Prior to the snap, illegal substitution on the defense. That penalty was five yards from the previous spot. It's still first down. And Dave, something you got to remember, you see, you look at Mike Hartline there, the starting quarterback, uh, got off to a, a really a, a slow start, but it was the special teams got off to a slow start. But Cobb, remember, Dave, he doesn't get a lot of snaps in practice. So, I mean, Hartline takes the majority of the snaps, so this is impressive what Cobb's been able to do. Cobb will throw, passes caught on that far side by Eric Adeyemi. But back to that Cobb thought, as Coach Brooks told us, he didn't know what the plans. He was still up in the air about how they were going to eventually use Cobb. He's such a great athlete, but they felt Hartline could be their guy down the road. But it looks like Cobb moving the change now. Seven and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. Inside handoff goes to Dixon, and he gets swallowed up just as soon as he gets a couple of yards by Dustin Doe. 
A junior out of Jasper, Florida. There's Randy Sanders, former Tennessee offensive coordinator. Cobb's number, six out of nine, 61 yards. Cobb does not look like he is overwhelmed by this situation at all. Boy, it's been impressive. This is a tough environment. We'll keep it down to the 26-yard line, 18, to the 25. Randall Cobb carries. We threw up the graphic how difficult it is for unranked teams to come in here and beat the Gators by 80 and three. <laughs> Here you got a true freshman trying to lead his team down the field to score, and he's he's been outstanding. Third and short. Third and three to be exact. Out of the shotgun. It'll be a quarterback keeper. Cobb dancing around. I think he'll be very close to the first down. And I'm going to say he's going to get it, but a flag comes in late. Right in the middle of that line of scrimmage. Yeah, right there where Randall Cobb was laying, a late flag. After the play was over, personal foul. Number 71 on the defense. Unnecessary roughness. That penalty is half the yard, half the distance to the goal. Added to the end of the run. First down. So that's that's Matt Patchen whistled for that violation. But here's Cobb today, some of his highlights. Well, we mentioned he came in and he, he really injected some good positive plays, both reading and then taking off with the football himself. Did a nice job of getting the ball out of his hands. He's he's given this offense a little spark. Well, after the personal foul, that'll set up Kentucky just outside the 10. Tony Dixon will take it inside the 10. Gain of two. We'll take a look at the red zone powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. And that was uh, the Gator defense last week against LSU. They gave up three touchdowns in the red zone in three possessions, but uh, still won by 30. Cobb to the end zone. Overthrows his tight end, T.C. Drake. Well, good job there by Dustin Doe, linebacker, taking away Cobb's easy throw in the flat, forcing him to try to stick one in the end zone. But the Gators now are going to have to watch Cobb with Hartline in the game. No, no chance of the quarterback taking off. But with Cobb in the game now, you got to be careful about rushing the passer because he can take off and get in the end zone. This has been a 12-play drive that's gone 76 yards. Kentucky can pick up a first down if they can get it to the one-yard line. Cobb over the middle. Pass intended for DeMario Ford off his fingertips. And Kentucky will bring out their field goal units. Good late dive by Rickerson, but really it's a ball that Ford should have caught. It's a well-thrown ball to the inside. Hits Ford in the hands, and he just can't quite come up with it. Not sure he needed to leave his feet either. Good job of getting in there. Well, three block kicks today, two punts, and a field goal for Florida. This one from 27. Lona Seaver gets it through the uprights, and Kentucky finally on the board. 35 to 3, the Gators out in front. Just over five to play back in a moment. 35 to 3, Florida out in front of Kentucky. 5:03 to go here in the first half. Take a look at our Texas Pete scoring drive. Lona Seaver with a 27-yard field goal. But a 76-yard drive, 76 yards, and total yards for Kentucky, 119 here in the opening half. Mastay's kick is 
hammered eight yards deep into the end zone. Well, it's time to update our all tell text to board poll. We asked you this question, who will have more total yards, Kentucky's Randall Cobb or Florida's Percy Harvin? And right now, Percy Harvin out in front. But however, with Cobb holding on to the football, seems like every snap now for Kentucky, he might come out here. You might want to rethink your vote. Be sure to text S1 or S2 to 55333. As always, thanks for participating in Alltel's Text of War. As you said that, Randall Cobb got another percentage point, Dave. Good job. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> uh, the Gators averaging 8.9 yards per play. And this time that average will go up as Chris Rainey picks up 12. ASCC fans, come see the new Ruby Tuesday and taste the delicious handcrafted burger starting at $5.99 all day, every day. Look at the jersey of Braxton Kelly. He's playing with a bad shoulder. Micah Johnson with a bad ankle. Johnny Williams with a bad shoulder. David Jones with a hyperextended elbow. Marcus McClinton with a sprained knee. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. Easton Moore with a carry out to the 39-yard line. Micah Johnson brings him down. A matter of fact, earlier in the week, all three of their starting linebackers didn't even practice the first few days of the week for Kentucky. They did all they could in the training room just to get these guys back on the field. Well, you mentioned coming in, Dave, they were the leading defense against points allowed. But it's just been, they've run into a steamroller. Of course, the two block kicks early in the game put them on their heels. And then the Florida speed been a factor so far. Rainey in alongside Tebow. He will get the handoff. And Rainey will have the first down to the 46-yard line. Rainey. By the way, the uh, three-block kicks from what uh, we're still researching back in the end for Florida football. But the Gators did have three-block kicks against South Carolina back in 2006. So they at least tied that number. But we got the Gator Sports Information staff digging through all the books to figure out what the record is if that isn't it already. Oh, what a big game that was to save their national title hopes. Under three and a half to go. We're in the first half with Demps in. He will get the handoff. And he will get hit immediately. Number two. Braxton Jeffrey Kelly Demps. and Micah Johnson come in to converge on that tackle. Good aggressive play by those two linebackers. Two guys you said you mentioned they were beat up. Braxton Kelly, the guy that leads his team in tackles, actually had to play in the middle when Micah Johnson was out. Now back out playing his normal outside backer spot. Second down and nine. Quick slant pass is caught. Carl Moore inside. The 30 down to the 29-yard line. Just the fifth reception of the year for Carl Moore. Excellent catch by Carl Moore. He has to spin behind and throws balls on the back shoulder. Does a good job of making the catch, working against David Jones. Carl Moore, a junior college transfer, found a home here at Florida out of Sierra Community College in California. Tough group to break in with, but uh, Urban Meyer told us yesterday, Carl Moore really coming on at the receiver spot for him. Harvin takes the direct snap. Percy Harvin dancing around, and he is wrapped up. Actually falls forward inside the 25, down to the 23-yard line. Go to Yahoo Sports to see over 50 Raycom Sports SEC football and basketball games and for only $4.95 a month. You can hear thousands of audio broadcasts. Be sure and follow your team all season long at Yahoo Sports. Now you might wonder if you're a Gator fan, why would you show that? Why do you do that there? Well, one, this game's not over for Urban Meyer's team, but two, teams are going to have to, Georgia comes up next week, they're going to have to prepare for Harvin in the backfield, Demps and Rainey together. around. He'll pick up the first down out of the 16 and a half yard line. Next week, our SEC game of the week takes us to Oxford, Mississippi, a classic SEC showdown as Auburn will try to regroup after a disappointing loss on Thursday night to West Virginia. 
and take on this Ole Miss club led by Jevin Sneed, 1230 Eastern. And log on to RayComSports.com and click on the Regents Bank Road Trip Planner for the quickest routes and all the info you need traveling around the SEC. Florida took a timeout. Give us a chance maybe to talk about those Auburn Tigers for a second because they are reeling in a lot of ways, and they got off to such a great start on Thursday night. Led 17 to three. Their offense seemed to be moving, and then, boom, they gave up 31 unanswered points. Yeah, they, the Mountaineers got Noel Devine rolling. Pat White kind of found his rhythm a little bit throwing the football, and in an Auburn defense that's really been stout all year long, got pushed around a little bit in the second half because they couldn't get any first downs on offense. Their their offense went a little stagnant. So, but I thought Cody Burns did some good things in the first half and trying to get that offense going. So it'll be interesting. They're going to have, that's going to be a tough test when they go to Oxford to take on the Rebels. Take a look at the Honda Red Zone presented by Honda Generators. The Gators have had two very, 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 very short drives. <laughs> one inside to one. And another one that's set up about the three and a half yard line. They're perfect today inside that Red Zone in terms of touchdowns and possessions. And it's first down and 10 for the Gators after the timeout, just outside the 15-yard line. Tebow all alone in the shotgun. Harvin in the slot to the near side. Here comes James. They will option to Brandon James. He's to the 10, cuts it back, and hit by three, four, five white jerseys. But yet another wrinkle in that Gator offense. Boy, they just formation you and formation you. You just don't know where it's coming. Well, you talk about trying to play for or prepare for this team. We look at the blocking. You have to block here in Florida. They run the football. This is a team that runs the football to 193 yards a game. And you better be able to block the receiver spot. Or you're not going to get a chance to play. But you think about trying to prepare for Urban Meyer's team. Phenomenal. See our Academy Sports down a distance marker telling us it's second down and one. Chris Rainey alongside Tebow. He'll move from right to left. Tebow will keep it inside the five. That'll be a Gator first down. And 48 seconds. They'll stop the clock at 47 to move the chains. Or actually just get them out of the way. As it'll be first and goal. One of those little wrinkles that Tebow presents. A big back, but he's a very nifty on his feet. A little spin move to the inside to get inside the five. Percy Harvin now in motion. Tebow looks right, takes it up the middle, touchdown. His second rushing touchdown today. Well, much of the chagrin of Rich Brooks, he's just saying, where, where are we? We're supposed to be in that gap, but good job of the big guys up front. He's going to fake the pass outside to Harvin and just run past Micah Johnson. He's there to make the play, just cannot get his hands around Tim Tebow. Watch for Micah Johnson, the middle backer. He's right in the hole, makes Carl Johnson's block miss, but Johnson got just enough of him to let Tebow slip in behind for the touchdown. It looks like that penalty may be against Florida. Yeah, it looks like an unsportsmanlike conduct or something. They're trying to decide whether they want it on the kickoff or they want it on this extra point attempt. After the play was over, a sportsman's light conduct. Number 81 on the offense, removing his helmet on the field of play. That penalty will be assessed on the kickoff, 15 yards. Well, that'll go against Aaron Hernandez, the tight end. I certainly didn't see anything. Urban Meyer disagreed with it, but obviously one of the men in stripes saw something that he did not like as Jonathan Phillips lines up for the point after. But this Florida football team, 11th in the league in terms of being penalized. Georgia, the worst team. And that point after is up and good. 26 seconds to go here in the opening half where the Gators have put up 42 points, 42 points here in the first half against the SEC's top scoring defense, allowing just under 12 points a game. That is unbelievable. Well, all season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the SEC, and today we'll tell you about a man who has been a fixture here at Florida Games for 60 years. 
Mr. Tubich, George Edmondson, has been leading the pregame cheer since 1948. The 86-year-old Gator fan will retire from his Mr. Tubich role at the end of this season. He was honored in a special pregame ceremony earlier today, and the Gators gave him one of their best two-bits that he's been a part of over the last 60 years. Yeah, that's a cool story, Davey. They did a great deal here for him. This is his last homecoming game, a presentation for him to begin the game, but the explanation of how that all came about, he was sitting in the cheering section, and when players would make a mistake and come off the field, he felt bad, so he wanted to try to raise their spirits. And he said, well, what can you do? And there was just a few people around and said, let's do the two bits, four bits thing, and that'll pick them up. <laughs> and boy, did it catch on. 60 years later, as you look at our Texas Speed scoring drive, hadn't had to pick up that man very no. much in his two-plus years playing football here at Florida. Tebow led the team on an 80-yard drive. But look at Steve Brown's defense. Today has been a uh, certainly a strange afternoon for everybody wearing a Kentucky logo. But look what Steve Brown has been able to do with this defense. They gave up 450 yards a game in 2006. Not the same defense you might be accustomed to, but having a tough day today. David Jones on that return. Well, Geico is canvassing the country this year to get the fans input on all the best moments of the 2008 football season. For tour updates, tour schedules, and your chance to take the Geico Best of 2008 fan poll, check out bestofcollegesports.com. You know, what do you do? If you're Rich Brooks, not that you were in many of these situations as a player, because I know your clubs were always in these things. <laughs> but if you were in a situation like this, what would you expect from your coach? Well, speaking strictly from experience, <laughs> all you want to try to do is operate. Just go back to your game plan, get this freshman quarterback off. He'll throw it incomplete. Looking for Addy Emmy. You know, he's got a lot of fans and family up from Miami to this game. But, I, I mean, this has been a puzzling first half. You just, I mean, you expect some things to maybe go wrong here and there, but you don't expect three kicks to get blocked. Blocked, two of them inside the five, and another one led to a touchdown. You just don't, I mean, you don't plan for that. No, and, you, and the emotion that your team goes through in those situations. Urban Meyer mentioned the block kicks and what they lead to. It's certainly on the other end of it. It's tough to handle. Cobb will get the first down and get out of bounds with five seconds on the clock. You can see how dynamic a player he is and just a true, I mean, we keep mentioning and it's mind-boggling. I think you come in the swamp as a true freshman. This kid was playing high school football in Tennessee last year and now directing this Wildcat offense against a really good Gator defense. So set up his opportunity to maybe throw a Hail Mary down in the end zone. Throw it up into the end zone. In the air. Incomplete out of bounds, but the clock hits zero. And the Gator head into the locker room with 42 points on the board. Listen to the crowd as the Gators finish the first half. Let's go downstairs and check in with Dave Baker. Urban is a numbers guy. You've talked to us before about what a block kick can mean. Did you see anything specific in the Kentucky protection that caused you to go after those first two? No, uh, I mean, they're, they're, they got excellent special teams. I just feel real good about our personnel. You know, you have Jeff Demps. We came up with two different looks. And William Green, they did a great job. But uh, no, it wasn't so much a weakness. It's just to change the game. You know, and we're a pump block team. We just don't pin them down there that, that much. It looked like that second one, it was kind of a delay on the part of Demps where he hesitated for a second and that speed got him through there. There's no delay. There's no delay. <laughs> Thanks, Herb. Best of luck. Second half. No delay in what the Gators have done. I'd have to take a look at the tape. I still think he delayed. The Gators lead it, though. 42 to 3. SEC football is presented in high definition where available by Raycom Sports. Dave Baker had a chance to catch up with Rich Brooks. Some special teams breakdowns really put you in a hole. What was your message at halftime? Well, 
Same as my message was last week. That's not who we are. And uh, we had a complete systems failure with three block kicks. And uh, that got them started. And uh, we we're having a hard time slowing them up now. All right. Thanks, Rich. We appreciate it. Best of luck in the second half. That message worked for the Cats last week, Dave Neal. But they've got a big hole to dig out of here to start the final 30 minutes of play. Rascal Flats bobbed that head from the album Still Feels Good. Got us rolling today. The guys are fresh off their benefit concert last Friday for the Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital at Vanderbilt. They've now raised over $3 million for that hospital in the past four years. Also, mark your calendars for next Tuesday when their greatest hits volume one is released. Get all your news on the group at www.rascalflats.com. And the first misfire by the Gators special teams today. As Caleb Sturgis sails that one, a line drive out of bounds. On a homecoming Saturday afternoon at the Swamp. The 85th edition of homecoming. Mike Hartline back on the field as he started the game, but the first three series did not go well. And he was relegated to the sidelines, and Randall Cobb ran the show for the last quarter and a half. But Hartline will line up in a shotgun. That's Dixon in motion. And right out of the gates, Hartline's pass is picked off. Ahmad Black will stroll into the end zone 40 yards. Now you get the blitz off the slot by Marky Anderson, who's the extra defensive back in the game. And Hartline did not see it till late. He looks for a blitz adjustment and just throws it out in the flat, and the only guy standing there is Ahmad Black. They only end up bringing five rushers, which is not a breakoff situation if you're a receiver. And Ahmad Black just does a nice job of rotating down where Mar uh, Marky Anderson came from on the blitz and is right there for the throw. So Ahmad Black with his third interception this year. As... Phillips converts the point after. But two of those three interceptions have resulted in points for Ahmad Black. Back in a moment. Well, the sun has made its way through the clouds here at the swamp. 49-3. It took nine seconds to score. E.J. Adams out of the end zone. A big time collision at the 15 yard line. Well, the Florida defense has scored three touchdowns this year. Ahmad Black had an 80 yarder in the opener against Hawaii. We were here to see that. Then Major Wright also had an interception against Hawaii that he returned for a touchdown. That one 32 yards. Two weeks ago, Brandon Spikes had two interceptions against LSU, including a 51-yarder to match his number. And then, of course, today, 40 yards by Ahmad Black. If you can get those bonus points off the defense, you're going to be in good shape on most afternoons. Alfonso Smith brought down by Jermaine Cunningham. Well, this will be a Kentucky team now that just has to line up and play for the games down the road. This is a good Gator defense. The number ones are still in the football game. And what you want to try to do is put together something that you can hang your hat on. Start moving the football, moving the chains. Try to get something to get you ready for next week. Joe Smith, the tailback, heart line. Will set up as time dumps it off to his fullback, Connor. And the bruiser out to the 23-yard line. Run down by A.J. Jones, a sophomore out of Tampa, Florida. Good decision to lay the ball off here. Nothing down the field. Brandon Spike surveying. He's in a zone. Now he wants to lay a lick. He did with a big fullback. Alfonso Smith, once again, the tailback. Third down and three. 
first down markers right on the 25-yard line. That's going to be very close to the first down. And they will bring the chains in to see just how close it is. Like it's just shy of the mark they have to reach there, Dave, the, uh, the 25. Yes or no, do they make it or not? Let's play a game. No, Let's have some fun today. Sure. Let's play a game. Sure. Okay. <laughs> there you go. You lose. I'm a lot. <laughs> well, that was a big first down for this Kentucky offense. You certainly didn't want to have to punt it away or... I mean, think about going for it, backed up this far in your own zone. You can mess with those kind of decisions. But it's 49 to 3, and you're just trying to get some confidence, as you said. I mean, you just need some something positive. Well, and, that, and that's the beginning, Dave. That's the beginning for Kentucky here in the second half to, to try to get something they can really sink their teeth into for the rest of the season. Part line, quick throw near side, and Cobb. Drops the football, second down and 10. The yards have been so hard to come by. Joker Phillips trying to dial up an easy throw here. It's a three-step drop, hit drop to the outside, and Randall Cobb's done a great job of coming in and sparking his team at quarterback, but he needs to help the quarterback that's in there now, Mike Hartline, by catching that football. Last two games, Cobb has really been good at receiver. Eight catches against South Carolina, five catches against Arkansas. A couple of TDs against the Hogs as well. Kentucky will work the far side. That's Gene McCaskill on the catch, Joe Hayden on the coverage. Now what they're looking for is soft corners to throw that route. That time a soft corner to that side, meaning he was going to drop back. He has a third of the field he has to cover, so he backpedals out of there. It's an easy throw on the hitch route to the outside, very similar to the one that was dropped by Cobb to get it in this nice third and three situation for Joker Phillips, the offensive coordinator. Today, 5 out of 11 for 25 yards. Hartline hit as he throws incomplete. And that will bring up a fourth down. Jermaine Cunningham getting the pressure on Hartline. Yeah, third and three situation. You're looking to get the ball out of there, try to find a crossing route. Good job of taking away the tight end. Cunningham wins to the inside against Gary Williams, and he's all over part line before he can sort out another throw. The tight end had been taken away. He was looking for somebody else. Cunningham did not provide him any opportunity to do that. Maste with a good punt that sends James back inside the 15. But Brandon has some room to the near side and a good open field tackle by John Connor, the fullback, on the speedy Brandon James. Well, this football season, it's all about you, 10 friends, and a private jet. Enter the Alltel My Circle Gridiron Getaway for your chance to take 10 friends on a private jet to any regular season game. The ultimate VIP experience for your chance to win. Text GAME to 57533 or visit alltelfootball.com. Tim Tebow in that first half, 6 out of 9 for 139 yards and two touchdowns. Jeff Dimps, the running back, but Tebow will set up a little screen. The ball is bobbled, but Dimps able to hold on to it and get a couple of yards. They yeah, want to set up a screen pass to Jeff Dimps, get him out in open space. We saw what he did with a little check down. He took it to the house earlier in the game, but kind of got tangled up in there with Carl Johnson trying to get out the screen. He's lucky to catch the football. Talk about distribution, Tim Tebow's numbers today, 7 out of 10 now, but, you know, 17 different players have touched the ball for the Gators this year. And there goes Chris Rainey. will pick up the first down out close to the 35-yard line. Rainey does a good job of getting in behind Aaron Hernandez, the tight end, number 81. Good block there as Pouncey pulls around. But there's Aaron Hernandez, 81, gets the block on Braxton Kelly. And a good job of Rainey reading right off the, the rear end of Hernandez to get upfield to get the first down. So good job by the tight end. He's a tremendous pass catching tight end. We saw his blocking skills right there. Sophomore out of Bristol, Connecticut. 
Lewis Murphy splits to the near side. Tebow. Fires pass is caught by James. Dancing around. Out to the 43-yard line. Tripped up by Matt Lentz. Dave, you mentioned the matchup issues. Brandon James is 25 in a slot. Now, what Kentucky does is they stay base defense, which means three linebackers are in the game. And there's just no, no way they're going to be able to cover Brandon James in the slot. They have to get their nickel in the game, and they have Robbie McAtee now in the game, the nickel spot of two linebackers. On a second down and one. To the near side, here's Chris Rainey, first down and more. Inside Kentucky territory, down to the 42-yard line before Mabry pushes him out of bounds. Well, only, only Chris Rainey's second reception of the year. We've seen Demps catch one. He came in with just five receptions. Here's Rainey, just his second catch of the year. And now you start talking about trying to prepare for Florida's offense. You knew you had to prepare for Demps and Rainey running it, but now them catching it out of the backfield on the little swings and checkdowns presents another part of the problem for the teams that have to prepare, and that's the Bulldogs, the Georgia Bulldogs, next week having to prepare for this Gator defense or Gator offense. And Kentucky will take a timeout. Timeout. Rich Brooks unhappy with a lot of things today. He's club down 49 to 3. Back to moment. A first down in situation for the Gators as they line up at the 42 yard line. And flags come down out of the timeout as Keystone Moore was. Getting the handoff. All start. Number 57 on the offense. That penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Our Woodman of the World scores. How about Texas Tech just lighting up Kansas? North Carolina taking care of BC right now. BC came in 23rd in the country. Now it's first down and 15. Ball sits at the 47-yard line. Tebow out of the shotgun. Man to the pocket. We'll dump it off over the middle. Quickly swallowed up is Deontay Thompson, the redshirt freshman out of well, Bill Blade, Florida. Braxton Kelly and Matt Lentz come out of that pile for the Wildcats. That was a play of very uh, kind of tells you what's going on with Tim Tebow. Great job of staying in the pocket and waiting. You know, last year probably skates out of there, takes off, does one of his magical deals running it. But we talked about his distribution of the football. He stays in the pocket, waits. And, we, and Dan Mullen even mentioned sometimes to a fault he's staying in there too long. We'd like to see him get out a little more. But nice job there to wait and get the ball out. Here comes James. Use him as a decoy and hand it off to Moore, who gets maybe a yard. Mitchell Keegan's with his sixth stop today. You know, back to Tebow for a minute. You know, a couple of weeks ago after the Ole Miss game, he took that loss so hard. A post-game press conference came out and made statements that you will never see another player, another team work harder than we will. Coach Meyer told us, as we had him against Arkansas, that he just wants Tim Tebow to have a little bit more fun playing the game. You know, get, you know, have some fun out there. Yeah, he puts so much pressure on himself. And if anything goes wrong, I don't care what it is, he, he kind of puts it on himself. And he would like to see him just kind of Go be the happy-go-lucky guy that we we recruited to come here. Here we go, scrambling out of the pocket to pick up the first down. Inside the 30 at the 29. I think he had a little fun right there. This is a guy that like he, you know, he gets beat up last year, but he he's a big kid at 6'3", 240 pounds, and. He is not shy about putting no. his helmet on somebody. See, he either. likes that. He, he likes the he contact. Lo loves the contact. But that that's some of the some of what he now has matured into. He's not just running around. He he runs for a purpose now. And a good job there. Pick it up the first down, extend the drive. More will get the handoff. Houston breaks a couple of tackles. He's to the 20. Cuts it back to the 15 and brought down there by Braxton Kelly, but that will move the sticks again.
Braxton Kelly, the leading tackler for the Wildcats. Motion pulls him out wide. Now he's in a pursuit situation. He's got to try to get down the line of scrimmage and make a play. Remember, it's a guy that's beat up. Does a nice job of getting down the line and making the play. Six tackles on the day now for Braxton Kelly. He's one of those guys that no matter how beat up he is, he's going to line up and play for you. Our Polaris ATV's toughest player of the game. Here's Keaston Moore who came into this game with just 15 carries. Moore now with four carries. 23 yards. The flag hits the deck. And that'll back, apparently back Florida up. How about Tim Tebow with 10 completions today, but he's found seven different guys. That's distributing the football. Yeah. Now, the penalty situation, Dave, you mentioned earlier in the game. Hold it. Number 76 on the yard. That penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay first down. The only team that's being penalized more is Georgia. Those two teams face each other next week. You can't give yards away, and Urban Meyer knows it. Well, Florida had a little taste of being in the red zone moments ago, but now they've backed up. As you look at our red zone, powered by Honda Generators for the ultimate tailgating experience. 7 out of 28 for Florida this year in the red zone. It goes Dex around the corner. <laughs> You know, Dave Baker at the top of the telecast was talking about the speed of Jeff Dempsey. And then an article written in the New York Times yesterday by Jerry Longman. It says, Dempsey is already faster than famous predecessors. Running backs like Herschel Walker ran a 10.2, 100 meters. O.J. Simpson ran a 10.3. Bo Jackson ran a 10.4. And he's slightly faster even than Bob Hayes, who ran a 10.05. And he won uh, an Olympic gold medal in the 100 meters. Yeah, bullet Bob Hayes. Dimps ran a 10.01. Here's Tebow. Dumps it off. Trying to find Her Harvey, but Trevard Lindley with another nice play. Another pass broken up. The career leader at Kentucky. Well, that's a tough matchup. We talked about you got to find Harvin. Lindley has been the guy that's been asked to find Harvin. And he does a nice job here. Remember, he had interception earlier in the game. And here, reaches across with the right hand to knock it away. Good job by Lindley to shadow Harvin. Harvin's touched the ball five times today. I'm sorry, three times for 55 yards and two touchdowns. You know, an Ole Miss game, we were hearing that loss. He was a one-man offensive show. Set the rear high for a tied the school record with 13 catches in that game. Here's Tebow. He's got all day to run. At the 10, down to the 5, and involved in a collision right at the first down chain. On third and 14, he got 14. Actually, he got 13 and three quarters. Spotted him just short of the first down. That's a reaction from the crowd here in the swamp. They felt like their Heisman Trophy quarterback got there, but certainly the knee came down just before he crossed the line. Good blocking again. Lewis Murphy getting a block for him. I'm so impressed with how Florida blocks down the field for each other. Their wide receivers and tight ends do a great job down the field, and that's why they get they got great speed. They have so many big plays because our players blocking for each other down the field. Timeout. Florida. Florida will take the timeout. Time out Back after work for your local stations. Forty-nine to three. Florida out in front. They're looking at a fourth down and inches. They will go for it. Tim Tebow, by the way, on his next rushing touchdown will set a new Florida record. He's tied with Emmett Smith. He will keep it and get down to the one-yard line. He fumbled the football and picked it back up inside the one. But it will be a first and goal situation. Well, it's the second time we've seen Tebow tackle from behind. The ball came out. Tebow spin move here and then gets hit on the way in. Good job of stripping it out. It looked like maybe Braxton Kelly got a hand on it and batted it out. But Tebow, unbelievably, again, white shirts everywhere. The only gator there is Tim Tebow, and he comes up with a football. Well, he is in the zone to set a Florida rushing touchdown record right here. 
first and goal from about the one foot line. He will hand it to James. And a flag comes in, in the line of scrimmage right in the middle of that aisle. And there's no signal of a touchdown, so they'll spot it just outside that goal line. They went with the smallest guy on the field. And you wonder, you know, Tebow is that big power back, and this is just them trying to minimize Tebow getting pounded as a holding penalty will put the Gators back outside the 10-yard line now. Initially called that against Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. Holding. Which <laughs> Number 56 on the offense. That penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Which would be hard to do on a running play from a defensive standpoint. But Marquise Pouncey, the center right here, he's the guy that's going to get flagged for the for the hold. Grab, grab hold of Peters and just turn his shoulders, and that's pretty clear. Nice, easy call. Once again, the Gators have only misfired inside the red zone one time this year. And that came on a fourth and nine play against Tennessee late in the game when they were already well out front. That handoff goes to Demps, brought down by Braxton Kelly, who now has 10 tackles today. He's coming off a 15-tackle performance last week against Arkansas. Slow to get up. Ricky Lumpkin, sophomore to Knoxville, Tennessee. Here's a look at our Nissan Heisman in the SEC, and we have plenty to choose from down here in Florida, but we'll talk about the Gators very first. Steve Spurrier in 1966. He broke every school record for a game, a season, and career passing marks during his three years here in Gainesville. He passed for over 2,000 yards and 16 TDs as a senior. He also kicked the winning field goal against Auburn as he became the SEC's third Heisman winner. Many people think it was that field goal. Took him over the top. Over the top. Yeah, why not? Multifaceted. <laughs> Rainey dancing around and stopped at the four-yard line. That'll bring up a third and goal. Robbie McAtee able to hang on to the elusive Rainey. Now, Robbie McAtee is the nickel back in the game. The Gators try to spread him out and then run the football. And here Rainey trying to get to that cutback lane. Good job McAtee staying at home and getting Rainey on the ground. Keaston Moore, the 210-pound senior, back in at tailback. Moore will get the handoff. Slide for the dice and his way down to that goal line. And he'll be just inches away from pay dirt. Ashton Cobb and Jeremy Jarman hanging on. Stop him just short. The crowd obviously wants the Gators to go for it. Well, they fought their way back down inside the one. Now they remember the holding penalty pushed them outside the 10. And they get the go sign from Urban Meyer. I think the senior running back, Keaston Moore, get an opportunity to step this in. It's Moore. Dodge. Touchdown. His second rushing touchdown in his senior campaign. Sixteen plays on that drive that ate up eight minutes and 55 seconds. Yeah, moving the chains, getting little chunks of yards. We've seen the explosiveness. You see Keaston Moore extend that ball over the goal line. One of the one of the few seniors on this Gator team gets it in the end zone. 
Jonathan Phillips going after his up and good. Yeah, Tebow, his reaction was like this was a three-point game, and they just locked it up late in the fourth. Well, that's, that's why he is who he is. It is uh, it's amazing. Tim Tebow, I was flying in here yesterday, you and I, and a guy on the airplane came over, ran over, ran over to me just to show me his picture on his cell phone with Tim Tebow. Guy's a senior here at Florida. He was fired up about his photo op with Tim Tebow. That's the guy, when you hear rock star status, that man has it. <laughs> I mean, it is unbelievable. Well, next week, we will head over to Oxford, Mississippi, 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central, as Auburn takes on Ole Miss. Antonio Coleman and send Derek Marks lead the Tigers into Oxford to take on Jevin Sneed and the Rebels. Plan on joining us next Saturday at 1230 Eastern, 1130 Central. Log on to secroadtripplanner.com and find the quickest routes and all the info you need traveling around the SEC provided by Regents Bank. Well, and Urban Meyer, as he does every game, is down on the sideline, down just by his kickoff unit. He's a special teams coach. He's down there trying to implore these guys to cover the kick. Never a dying moment. you got to love Tebow. Mud on the face. <laughs> Looks like a linebacker. That kickoff taken by Adams and a loose football. Kentucky will have it at the 27-yard line with 2.50 to go here in the third quarter. Hartline coming back on the field for Kentucky. How about that drive, though, that ate up eight minutes and 55 seconds off the clock. Well, here's a look at what Mike Hartline has had to, uh, to deal with today. Well, we're closing in on Halloween, and you should probably be playing John Carpenter's famous piece from that movie because... It's been a nightmare for Mike Hartline today. Wow. Creative thinking from Dave Archer. Alfonso Smith dropped the Hartline pass. Second down and 10. Well, we had a chance to visit with Mike Hartline a couple weeks ago prior to the South Carolina game. And he got a tremendous amount of confidence. He learned a ton from Andre Woodson last year. And, and remember, Woodson had to go through a lot of hard knocks in his career. Hardline playing as a sophomore, he's only going to get better. Breaking it to the outside is Tony Dixon close to the 35-yard line. They'll spot it just outside the 35. Brought down by Juan de Pierre Louis with the stop. Speaking of Hartline, his brother, wide receiver at Ohio State, has a little bit of a game today. Small one. Yeah. Little Penn State, Ohio State action. Third down today for Kentucky. This has really been their Achilles heel offensively lately is their third down conversions. Well, and being third and one, not be able to knock them off the ball. That's a tough time here. Hartline dives forward, and that spot will give him the first down out at the 37-yard line. So the chains will move, and Kentucky keeps possession of the football. Close captioning is provided by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Charlie Strong. Defensive coordinator, matching which with Joker Phillips, the offensive coordinator at Kentucky. Two guys that were on the same staff at South Carolina for a year and actually are really good friends and continue to stay in touch, have a lot in common. And today, Charlie's defense been a little bit much for the Kentucky offense. You look what Charlie's team's, what, what this group has done from last year to this year. Now, of course, last year, Dave Archer, they were playing with a lot of new bodies out there. Yeah, keep it, keeping people out of the end zone. They're doing a great job of doing that. And obviously, this group has grown up. But still, we're talking about freshmen and sophomores playing all over the field for Charlie Strong. This looks great to cop. Can't shake the blue jerseys. But to finish that point about the, the defense, Dave, you know, they, they are only losing one or two players off their entire two deep defensively. Just about everybody you see on the field running in and out for Charlie Strong's defense 
will be here next year. Yeah, that's a scary proposition for anybody that's going to the Gators on the schedule for 2009. First to Tim, I'm brought to you by IKBI Incorporated, Igby, building vision, building relationships. Third and seven. side. Dixon will get it to the 46-yard line. Brandon Hicks, sophomore to Jacksonville, Florida, with the stop. And that'll bring up a fourth down situation, fourth and about two, and that will lead to Tim Maste returning to the field. Maste will attempt his seventh punt of the afternoon. The first two once he wishes he could get back. They were blocked. Florida backs off as Maste booms it into the end zone. The Florida special teams have been very special today. Right off the bat. That's how we got started on Kentucky's first possession. This was their second possession. Rainey blocks it, sets up a touchdown from the one-yard line, and then a blocked field goal attempt. Major Wright would come out of there with it and take it into Kentucky territory. Joe Hayden got that block with a left hand, and that has set the tone for today. Jeff Brantley comes in to take over at quarterback now for the Florida Gators. Excuse me, John Brantley. And a loose football, a fumble. I saw the beanbag come out. It looks as though Kentucky will have possession, at least momentarily. They will say, now we're having a discussion about it. Robbie McAtee came up with the fumble. Now, Keiston Moore is going to carry the ball straight through the middle. Brantley hands it straight off through to Keiston Moore. Let's see where that ball comes out. Clinton rips the ball, but it, well, Keiston Moore was really close to being on the ground here for this The ruling on the field is that the ball carrier was down prior to the fumble. Second down. Yeah, I think that's, that's the end of the quarter. Like Keiston Moore's knee and hip that hit the ground prior to the ball coming out. Well, that'll be the end of the third quarter. And the Gators are rolling on homecoming. It is 56 to 3. Look at our new AT&T stats through three quarters. You see what Florida has done, 190 yards on the ground, 180 through the air. Three out of six on third down conversions. Get behind the scenes look at some of your favorite teams and players at the ATT Blue Room.com slash sports. John Brantley brought down by Sam Maxwell. Tim Tebow will now signal in the plays. John Brantley, six foot three, 215 pound red shirt freshman. He's completed two out of four passes this year for 19 yards. And to hear the coaches talk about his ability to pass the football is uh, kind of anxious to see him kind of grow into this role. Yeah, he's only he said only thrown the ball a couple of times, so they'd like to see what they've got in a game situation. That was a pretty good looking pass to Keiston Moore out in the flat. And Dave, not, not an easy pass either. You start talking about shooting it in the flat like that to hit him on the upfield shoulder so he can catch it and run up the field. Excellent throw by by Brantley out of the box, his first throw of the game. You know, I, I would have liked it before the game today. I saw you down there, Dan Mullen throwing the football with uh, Brantley before the game, getting loose, warm-ups, and you were standing there talking to Dan Mullen, the offensive coordinator. I wish you'd have taken a few throws and give me a read on the velocity and the rotation <laughs> on the ball, but you were afraid to get in there. Yeah, you, yeah I, I didn't want to have to catch his ball. I didn't have a problem throwing it. <laughs> right. Step up, pass knocked away, intended 
for Nelson. Shamari Moore on the coverage for Kentucky. It's a kid that, uh, you know, obviously the, he's a legacy guy. His dad played quarterback here. His, his brother played linebacker here. His brother played in the National Football League. And, or, I mean, sorry, his uncle that played in the National Football League. I'm sorry, Scott. I talk to Scott all the time on his radio show, <laughs> Tampa. run with the football. Inside the 45 to the 43 yard line, Calvin Harrison, junior out of Columbia, South Carolina. Tebow enjoys that. You know, Tebow gets so much joy out of watching other guys make plays. We've seen it before. Here, Brantley does a great job on the little quarterback delay through the middle. I've never seen a guy get so jacked up about other guys making plays than Tim Tebow. Evo finishes up today 11 out of 15 for 180 yards and two touchdowns. Third down and about a yard. Keaston Moore on the carry. That will move the chains for Florida. Well, Keaston's gotten in the end zone here in the last quarter, got in the end zone, but he's kind of been the forgotten guy in this whole deal, Dave, and the guy that a senior, one of those seniors, I said one of those few seniors that has helped build this program that Urban Meyer has. Nelson goes in motion with the handoff, will go Keaston Moore. Keaston Moore's kind of been the lost man in this running back rotation. He came in as the, you know, the senior, and you got Emmanuel Moody on that sideline, which has now given Moore a few more carries. There is Moody, who has been bothered by, you know, a bad ankle and tweaked it again this week in practice. They were hoping to have him back, but apparently he should be ready to go next week against the Georgia Bulldogs, but we really haven't had a chance to see Emmanuel Moody do much except at Tennessee. Yeah, he's, he's been winged by that ankle. Over the middle pass is caught by Nelson into the end zone, touchdown, Florida. Well, there's John Brantley's first touchdown pass as a Gator. Right down through the middle, no one home in the middle, and what strength by Nelson to get him in the end zone. This work in the inside part of the field, great move on the safety, turning around Ashton Cobb, and then, hey, I want to get in the end zone. He muscled him in from the five. Well-thrown ball by Brantley. Phillips to attempt. That was Nelson's first catch of the year. The Gators are loving life on homecoming. They have put 63 points on the board. 11.45 to go here in the fourth quarter. This Florida team, Arch, they put together 51 points against LSU. And they come in here and they've thrown up 63 on a defense that was averaging less than 12 a game, giving up 12 a game. And the most they'd given up all year was 24 in a single game. And the second time today, Sturge's kick goes out of bounds. They see him visiting there with Urban Meyer. Urban wants him to kick, kick it between the numbers and the sideline. Number 19 on the kicking team. Receiving team has chosen to take the ball on the 40-yard line. First down. Well, fans, be sure to go to RayComSports.com for a variety of SEC football highlights and features, archived videos, sweepstakes, podcasts, and information on our SEC Game of the Week. RayComSports.com, your link on the web to the SEC. Randall Cobb back in at quarterback. Monsell Allen will also join him in that backfield. 
Monsell, the 225-pound bowling ball. 5'7", 225. Cobb will throw. DeMario Ford grabs a reception, gains four and a half on the play. Let's go check in with Dave Baker. Dave, I know you guys have been talking about it a lot today, but you really can't overstate what Randall Cobb has done for this Kentucky football team. Not only the different positions, but to come in and do it as the freshman. The problem becomes for Rich Brooks and company, there's just not enough of him to go around. He does a great job at quarterback, but when you put him there, you're taking your biggest threat off the edge outside. And so they've really got some decisions to make not only down the road this season, but for Randall Cobb and his future in terms of where he can best help this Kentucky team. Well, and I think right where he is is where he's going to help the team the most. Now, Pat, I know you're talking about taking a guy out, but he's got the football in his hands all the time at quarterback. He decision makes. He can pull it, take it down. And, and Buzz, this young receiver core, we know Dickie Lyons is out. And it's a huge loss. Uh, but this young receiver core, a lot of freshmen, sophomores are going to have to step up. Uh, but I think Randall Cobb's right where he needs to be. Well, he's been impressive today. He'll hand it off to Monsell Allen. He'll pick up the first down inside the Gator 45 at the 44-yard line. 5'7", 225. Look at Monsell. you got to love that. Sophomore to New Orleans, Louisiana. Well, he, you, bowling ball is a good description. At five, so I was down there on the field, and I know one thing, you don't want to run into him. <laughs> Brad Durham rocked out there a little too early, the right tackle, but he saw that blitz coming. Outside, number 14 on the defense in the neutral zone, causing the offensive player to react. Five drops penalty from the previous spot. Yeah, there's Marky Anderson down. sneaking in from the corner, short side of the field, and <laughs> he saw that too. And, and they, they used the, the defense enticed him off with the movement on that side. Kentucky. Clock now dips under 10. Here's Allen. Look at the bulldozer. Wow. He ran right over Lorenzo Edwards and picks up the first down. Welcome to the game, Lorenzo. Yeah, this is one to get you on the highlight film where your friends start laughing at you, too, right here. Monsell ran right over Edwards. He said he was low center of gravity. You better get lower than he is, or he's going to plow you. Edwards, a sophomore right off Orlando, goes 6'2, 230. There's Allen again. And that time, Lorenzo Edwards won the battle with Monsell Allen. Get low, Lorenzo. <laughs> Our first and ten line brought to you by IKBI Incorporated, Igby, building vision, building relationships. All right, one apiece, one for Allen and one for Edwards. We need the rubber match. When it's 63 to three, you got to find some other games. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is the impressive part of what Randall Cobb's been able to do is get the calls from the sideline after he's already called something in the huddle. Here's Cobb. He's shut down by Lorenzo Edwards. There you go. Lorenzo steps it up. Let's go check in with Dave Baker again. Buzz. Dave, you always wonder if you're the person that's up 63-3, to how high the level of play is going to be. But the thing about the defense for Florida and Charlie Strong's unit, these guys are out there trying to make an impression right now. You've got a lot of guys on the field right now on this Florida defense that were starters last year that they brought guys in who have been better than them, and they're really out there fighting for playing time right now. So that's why you're seeing such a high level of effort. Third down and 10. Cobb has 
room to run, needs to break who else, but Edwards, and he pushes him out of bounds. So Edwards, four straight tackles for Lorenzo Edwards. Wow. Almost as though he knew that he was going to be called out by his teammates, <laughs> so he had to step it up. Right. He's done a nice job. He stays at home here. He's in a zone. He's got to play his zone, and now he's got to rally up to make the play on Cobb. Does a good job of getting him out of bounds before he can get the first down. Fourth and one. Can Edwards make it five straight tackles? First down and hit at the 12 yard line by Brandon Hicks. Let him move the chains. And this is why I believe he's where he needs to be. The ball's in his hands, he can throw it, he can pull it down, and he create problems for you on the perimeter when he runs. Took a big shot from Hicks in the back. He felt that one, but he got the first down for the Wildcats. play of this drive coming up. Cobb will throw it a little too high. Running right for the left-hander. Tough throw looking for DeMario Ford. Yeah, and he was late with the throw as well. Texas Tech just uh, whipping Kansas, 63 to 21 in North Carolina, dismantling Boston College, Miami over Wake. Let's look at our Woodman of the World scoreboard. Well, Randall Cobb now looks at the sideline. Randy Sanders getting the call. He probably took 30% at most of the snaps in practice this week in preparing for this game of quarterback. Going to the end zone. Batted away at the last minute by Wandy Pierre-Louis. Excellent late hands by Wandy Pierre-Louis. This is one of those guys Dave Baker mentioned. This guy started last year. Had his job taken from him by Janoris Jenkins, but a good job. He sees the hands come up, and then he mirrors it with his hands and strips it out of there. Wanda Pierre Louis started every game last year at corner. Got this got the start early this year before Janoris Jenkins, the true freshman, just kind of rolled into that position. You see our Academy Sports down the distance marker telling you it's third and ten. Cobb stands tall, fires. Pass caught down at the five yard line by Ross Boat. But a flag comes in. That would have been a yard and a half shy of the first down. Personal foul, number 90, on the defense. After the play was over, personal foul, number 61, on the offense. Those penalties all set. It'll be fourth down. Well, we were talking about Janoris Jenkins a moment ago. For more on that, let's go down to Dave Baker. Yeah, Dave, one of the few bad spots, if you will, for Florida today. Jenkins uh, took a hit in the knee, really on about the first series. Uh, they took him back in and x-rayed him. It's only a bruised knee. And once the Gators jumped out to this big lead, they held him out to give him a chance to get ready for Georgia next week. All right. Thanks, Buzz. Fourth and two. Cobb will keep it. Spence crushed at about the three and a half yard line he needed to get it to the three and Lorenzo Edwards along with Will Hill combined for that tackle boy Lorenzo Edwards making a name for himself helping the Gators stop Kentucky on that drive Lorenzo Edwards with five tackles in that drive by Kentucky and that's a good job by that group from Florida understanding that that Randall Cobb was probably going to be the guy who's going to handle the ball out on the edge, run throw off, run, run pass option. And Lorenzo Edwards and his mates step up and make a play.
Don Brantley back in as the Gator defense stands tall on fourth down. The Gators will take over inside their own five. And that handoff to Let's look at what Tim Tebow's been able to do today. Tebow sticks that one in the end zone. That was after the first block run, and an excellent throw to Harvin under pressure. And then Tebow got his second rushing touchdown of the day, and then just extending drives and pull it down and dive. And, and here's what he, I think he gets as much joy out of as anything else is pulling for his teammates. Brantley had a nice run there. Got Tebow up off the deck. Vincent Brown getting some work at tailback. <laughs> Vincent Brown listed as a cornerback. That's pretty efficient right there. Distributed the ball extremely well, got in the end zone a couple times, threw a couple. I mean, you know, anybody that thinks that Tim Tebow is not as productive as he was last year is crazy. And he's got a lot more people around him that can make plays. Third down and a yard to go. There's Brown, who was hammered back at the 12-yard line. So Brown with three straight carries. That time it was Luke McDermott getting in the way. Did a good job of competing there by McDermott to fight to the inside and make that play. Nothing like looking down and see a player you're not expecting to see. 37, and you go to the flip card, and there's two 37s. Yeah, neither <laughs> one, one of them are running backs. Right, one of them's listed as a corner, one's listed as a long snap. That's, that's what you get when it's 63 to 3. The second punt of the day goes haywire. And that ball is kicked out of the back of the end zone by Bobby Kane. We are going deep into the depth chart now. Yeah, it looked like a low snap. He had a tough time with it. Number 92 on the kicking team, out of the back of the end zone. The result of the play or the penalty is the safety. You got to get down like a second baseman. Knee down, block that. Urban Meyer knows a little something about it. Field and a grounder, former minor league baseball player in the Braves organization. Shortstop, wasn't he? Yes, he was. <laughs> Shortstop. Back in front of him. 63-5 after the safety. Just over four minutes to go. Lady having a good time, those young ladies. Here at homecoming 2008. Steve Miller Band last night. Concert in front of 35,000 here at the Swamp at Gator Growl, largest run student pep rally in the country. Winston Guy to take this kick and stumbles over the 35. Number 19, Winston Guy. And speaking of Gator Growl last night. About 35,000. One of our best players in special came teams. Came out to three-year letterman. To hear their coach, Urban Meyer, introduce some of the seniors. And then the Steve Miller Band. Producer Rob Rock, he's telling me to talk, but I'm enjoying Steve Miller Band. Come on. <laughs> Live concert in high def were available. Monsell Allen. And off the number 30. Will Fiddler, by the way, in at quarterback, a sophomore from Henderson, Kentucky. Number 10, Will Hill. And number 6, Jay Howard. Rich Brooks would like to be listening to the Steve Miller band right now. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, what is, you know, what's, what do you say to a team after a game like this? Is this a situation where you say, uh, don't dwell on this, let's get out of here, go home, pretend this didn't happen? Well, unfortunately, I've heard, <laughs> heard it a few times, and it's, you know, they try to do whatever they can to, if a coach try to build up your confidence as a player, but 
really it's all about the player just kind of looking at it, looking for what it is, trying to learn from it. Where did you make some mistakes? Obviously, some protection issues in the punt block team. Uh, and they had the guys to block them up there. They just didn't get it done. So he's going to say, hey, look, for, look at it for what it is. You're better than this and come back and get ready to play next week. Sell Allen making some people miss at 225 pounds. There's Brandon Antoine, who had a degenerative muscle in his back that uh, he had to overcome. It was in a wheelchair for much of last year. It happened October 9th. It's called compartmental syndrome in the lower back. The muscle in the back had basically died. He was having to re rehab four times a day to get back on the football field. Here goes A.J. Nance. Announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Raycom Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Raycom Sports is prohibited. Schedule for Kentucky. Mississippi State next week. That was a game that Mississippi State came into their building and got them last year. It's a game we did, so they're going to want to return the favor as they head down to Mississippi State next weekend. Pass is caught. First down. Aaron Boyd. The true freshman out of Lexington, Kentucky. Younger brother of former quarterback Shane Lloyd, who played there from 01 to 04. Missed the early part of fall camp because of mono. It's really set him back. Got a ton of talent. Boy, he's a good looking athlete, too. 6'3, 210 pounds, can run. One of those freshman wide receivers now that's going to have to step up and fill the void of some of the players that moved on after last season. Goes to Trey Bowen. GCS standing scores came out last Sunday, and I think a lot of people surprised that Florida at 10 thought they might be a little bit higher, but Georgia in a good spot at number seven. There's Alabama at number two, but right now I think everybody's looking up at Texas. Now remember, those two teams play yeah. each other today, so that's going to solve itself. Texas Tech took care of business today. They get Texas next week. And of course, Penn State plays Ohio State later on today. So some of that's going to clear its way and allow Florida to get in there. And of course, next week, Georgia and Florida. Here goes Allen on a second down and nine. And speaking of Georgia next week, here's a look at the Gators' upcoming schedule. They'll travel to uh, Jacksonville just up the road. Then it's at Vanderbilt, and then they return home for a couple before finishing in Tallahassee. Third down and eight now as the clock goes down to four, three. This will be the last play. And it's incomplete. And this one is over. Urban Meyer and company will go to six and one on the season and four and one in SEC play. Rich Brooks and the Wildcats go to five and three and one and three. 63 to five is our final score from the swap. We will come back, have more after this.